This was the first game system that I ever owned. Or maybe it was the NES. I really don't remember which one came first. My Game Boy has taken a beating over the years, but this thing's an absolute unit, so it could take it. I used to duct tape the battery pack on until I got a new one. Sometimes I gotta smack it to get it to work. This iconic piece of retro tech released in 1989, the same year that I was released. The first thing you might notice about it is that it's absolutely massive. The second thing you might notice about it is that the screen is abysmal. The pea soup color has a sort of retro charm to it, but games could probably look a little prettier if they went with literally any other color. The worst thing about this is the screen luminance. There is essentially none. You could forget about playing it in anything less than ideal lighting conditions, unless you have one of these snake lights or something. Or something like this, a backlight mod. I was lucky enough to visit the man who literally wrote the book on Game Boy modding. I got to check out his and his brother's Game Boy modding workshop, where Game Boys go to die, get ripped apart, and then reincarnated into something way prettier. Thank you, Dollar Shave Club, for sponsoring this video. Fine! As you probably already know, Dollar Shave Club has all of your grooming needs covered. Shower, oral care, deodorants, and most importantly, shaving. No. Dollar Shave Club sent me their ultimate shave starter set, which includes their executive handle and blades, one ounce tubes of their Dr. Carver's prep scrub, shave butter, and post shave dew, which is actually my father's favorite. He always asks if I can get him some or he just straight up steals it. I like Dollar Shave Club because if it weren't for these ads, who knows when I'd be shaving next? Visit dollarshaveclub.com slash wolf to get the ultimate shave starter set for just five bucks and round out your grooming routine by adding any of their other high quality products. After that, the restock box ships full size products at regular price. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash wolf. And thanks Dollar Shave Club for helping support us. I love you. DMG mods are nothing new. People have been trying to figure out how to put a backlight in a Game Boy since as far as I can remember. And there's plenty of videos on the internet showing you just how to put a backlight in an original Game Boy. It's something probably anybody could do if you're willing to kill a couple of Game Boys along the way. Or you could just get a pre-built one from Greg and Ben over at Game Changer Mods, which is something that I've wanted to do ever since I saw them at the Long Island Retro Game Expo in 2018 because why do it yourself when you can leave it to the professionals? And I've heard about DMG mods before, but it's truly something else when you see it in person or when you see a bunch of them lined up in a row, all with uniquely designed shells and buttons. It definitely catches your eye. All right, I guess I gotta put my hair down to represent, right? <laughs> How did you discover this? Uh, I discovered the it. Modding scene. I was I was drinking and I was buying stuff on eBay one night and I bought a Game Boy Color with some games. I just started looking into it because I was like, oh, maybe I could change out the buttons basically and went, that was it. I was able to sell them and I got good feedback from people um, on Instagram and stuff. And uh, I don't know, it's fun. The design of this one he made for us is very eye-catching. It's the familiar iconic Game Boy shape or in this case, Game Boy Canvas with a hard twist. All I did was give him a sheet of all of the logos that we use and then he just went to town. It's a custom print job on an Arctic white semi-transparent case that allows some light to shine through around the screen, illuminating some of the innards underneath. The black border and black buttons were also carefully chosen for this design. It's really, really fun to play. It feels just as good in the hands as the original. The bright screen is way easier on the eyes than the pea soup original. It's just an all around better experience. The only flaw is that I don't want to take it anywhere for fear of scuffing it up. This is a one of a kind piece that I want to preserve. 
maybe throw a DC brick on it and have it displayed forever. So basically this is what we do, right? So this is this is a custom custom made game. It's one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, we do all the graphic design, basically. Um, and then we send it off to get printed on these shells. So retro modding is, is sort of pioneered the premium printing process. Uh, and we took advantage of that, you know, being a graphic designer, I was able to just do it real quick, you know, and uh, it gave us the opportunity to be able to express ourselves more basically and be in individual. I mean, these are one of a, this is one of a kind. I mean, we could make more, but <laughs> you know, this is an art piece. You know, it's, it's, it's almost less about the Game Boy, you know? And then on the other hand, you can just put whatever the cutest character you want on them. <laughs> and yeah, so this is this is the one that we made for Wolf Den. I was already blown away when you sent me the Instagram picture. And then seeing it in person, I like it. So yeah, I mean, that's, times that's right? the thing is like, this is like, you're not going to sell this. You're not going to put this on Craigslist, right? <laughs> this is like an heirloom piece for you, you know? It's like cool to make these for people because like, it's just an awesome, unique thing. So anyway, so after we do that, I'm not going to put a red button on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's part of the design process. I mean, it's a unique surface, right? And it has all these holes in it. So you got to really sort of plan where things are going to be and how the colors are going to work. Like, um, for example, like, the strategic placement of these black start and select pads just fills in the black, right? Yeah. So that's by design, you know? But then, like, the the uplink one, uh, we were just going to do, you know, whatever, just standard design. Um, but once you get it and you see it, you, you start thinking, there's so many options, you start thinking of all the cool stuff you can do. You know, it's like a little art studio or something where you have a bunch of different colored paints and you just kind of slap them together and see what works. But you know, then there's little options here and there, like concave convex buttons, um, NES style D-pad versus the... Uh... See now this is cool because one of our logos has the D-pad in it. Oh, that's true, yeah. So that's kind of, it kind of works with the black. I think I kind of like the black. I think the black's a little bit. After working with the Game Boy camera a lot, I decided that I wanted a backlit Game Boy because it would be easier to work with. And because I thought I was cool, I decided that I wanted to get original hardware. So I got the Japanese only Game Boy Light. Don't get me wrong, the Game Boy Light is a fantastic piece of tech, but when you put the two side by side, it just pales in comparison. Plus, the screen has a major ghosting effect that isn't nearly as bad on the original or the modded Game Boy. I don't know, there's something sort of hypnotizing about when you look at this screen, it's just so sort of like the pixels you were saying and how they're blue and the crispness of it. It's just fun to look at and stuff. Way, way more fun than I think the Game Boy colors are. You said that you view these as sort of an art piece. Does that also influence why you lean into Original Game Boys instead of Game Boy Color. Yeah, I mean, look at the uh, like the sort of canvas of it is just a, a little bit more substantial and straightforward. I think it's weird designing from them for them because it's not just a square. It's got these holes in it, so yeah. like <laughs> it's not just a slate. Yeah. Plus, they're just iconic. I feel like if you're gonna do all this, do it on the iconic one. I mean, that's definitely what stands out to me. Is is it's the iconic original Game Boy that everybody knows, but then you, you know, go wild with it, or you, or you do something to just completely f it up, like make it Sega. <laughs> so is this a is this a faceplate that Retro Modding has, or is this something you made? That is our custom design. Okay. I mean, this one is one of our biggest sellers. Uh, this one came out really good. That one is cool. But yeah, you know, we sell as many Hello Kitties as we do anything else. So there's really, everyone's involved. Everyone, everyone's really into this stuff. So it's cool to see that. Again, this is something that you could do yourself. Just get ready to do some soldering and to take some razor blades to some Game Boy screens. 
you're essentially cannibalizing a Game Boy to make it prettier. The book has a pretty good step-by-step -step guide in there, as well as some words of wisdom so you could steer clear of some rookie mistakes. It's not all just about the original Game Boy Backlight mod either. There's the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, even the Poke Mini. So this is about how to spot um, fake games, which is pretty big, I think, I think it's pretty big for retro games all, all, all in all platforms, all formats, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly cartridges, but like Super Nintendo, Nintendo. This is a dead giveaway. This is why I'm like, you know, it's not a fake. It's just a bootleg, you know? It's mm -hmm. not, no one's trying to like convince you that this is the real game, you know? It just says game on it. How long have you been? Like from your first, the first time you went on eBay one drunk night and bought a bunch of stuff for a Game Boy Color it's since been then three and now. Years. Like, three, probably, three years, it's it? Yeah, probably almost three exactly, exactly years, yeah. So how long since buying those Game Boy Color mods and then making the Etsy shop? Um, I sold a few on eBay and then uh, not long, a month or two, maybe right away. I don't remember, wow. yeah, it happened right away. And it wasn't like a huge success right away. I had to stick with it. I remember being very, it wasn't moving fast enough and uh, you know, I was sort of upset about it, but stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say somebody wants to start tomorrow. They want to just go buy a bunch of stuff and buy their own stuff. What do you have to say? Like, are there any mistakes that you've made that you can like, yeah, we'll try to lean people in the right First direction. thing, buy the, buy the book. Yes, uh, obviously. Uh, Game Boy <laughs> modding. Um, but I, something I say in the book is don't be afraid to break a few Game Boys, basically. Um, just get in there and start chopping them up and practice makes perfect. So don't practice on your home original if you have a fresh, child of yeah, Game Boy. <laughs> if, yeah, if there's something you really want to preserve, don't practice on that. I started this whole thing with 250 bucks, basically. Um, it's a not like a nothing, but you know, maybe buy three Game Boys instead of one Game Boy and then practice on them and then see where you're at, basically. Uh, definitely just don't get discouraged when you break the first one or the second one because it's likely to happen, especially if you don't know how to solder or anything. You know, there's general skills that people might be better or worse at. But. So if Game Boy is something that you're into, or maybe you're just into tinkering with retro hardware, then consider doing one of these mods yourself. Obviously, the book isn't a necessity, but it's definitely a nice reference to have. And it's just a fun thing to read through for somebody who wants some insight on the modding scene, like me. And if you don't intend on doing one of these mods yourself, but you're still interested in these mods, then you should check out Game Changer Mods on Instagram and their Etsy store. The complete builds are not cheap, but neither is getting a backlit screen yourself. Plus you're getting a high quality build from someone who's already done it a million times. If all you want is a Game Boy, then go on eBay and buy a Game Boy. If you want a little bit of a better experience and you got some time on your hands, then try doing one of these mods. If you want an art piece, then go check out Game Changer Mods. Or if you don't want to be bothered, because I don't want to be bothered either. So these, these you've done for, like that's for guy with the hair, that stupid channel. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think about this inside look at a Game Boy modding workshop? What do you think of these Game Boys? Is this something that you'd be interested in? What games would you want to play on it? Or are you just, Fine with the pea soup. Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and all of this other social media garbage. Also, i like to mention that we're doing a panel. I mean, we can't go anywhere, but the Long Island Retro Game Expo has turned into an online thing called Uplink. And on Saturday, August 8th at 3.15 p.m., me, Elia, and Greg will be doing a panel all about this book and his mods and stuff. And you can ask questions and stuff live in the chat. And then the next day on August 9th at 1 p.m., me and Will are doing a panel. So you can do the same thing, hang out, and we'll talk about this channel and anything else you want to talk about. Of course, we got new videos and live streams all the time here. Our schedule is usually in a pin tweet over on our Twitter. And we got Wolf Den Live 
our live podcast where we can hang out and talk to each other. And we got streams over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Turn on notifications there. I stream a bunch, but my schedule is a little wonky. You, you want to know when I go live. But of course, the most important thing that you could do and the easiest is just subscribe. That way you know when we release new videos because you can't rely on YouTube suggested to serve you new videos. Make sure that you're subscribed because you might think that you are and you're not. And share this video with a friend, a friend who is into this sort of retro stuff and might be into doing one of these mods themselves or might just want to check out some cool looking Game Boys. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good week. God, so, so cool.